What is up YouTube, Kevin Wolford123. Today's video is a pickup video, but a very special one. Now, this, as you can see here, is a Sega Multi Mega. Uh, this system is one that's eluded me for many, many years. Uh, when I was a kid, um, quite a young kid, um, I remember seeing this in, I think it was like Dixon's or Tandy at the time. The thing is, it was a lot of money. Uh, trying to convince your mum to buy you something like this was very hard. And uh, I did end up getting a Mega CD in the end, but it was one of the Mega CD 2s paired with the Mega Drive 2. Um, so, you know, it's not too bad. But this just looks so cool. I've, this is like, yeah, this is my Grail system. Uh, I've always wanted one, and how I got this was from CEX. Now, they had it up. Um, an okay price. It's kind of the go going rate for it. But um, I had trade-ins. I, one night, just went through my stuff. <clears throat> Excuse me, I've got a bit of a cold. I went through my stuff, like all my cables and stuff and the controllers and that that I didn't need anymore. Like I've got excess amounts of like Wii controls. And um, I just piled them all together and took them in to see what I got. And I got more than enough to get this. So this cost me about 30 quid in trades. Uh, so I'm well happy with that. Um, of course, it's got it's got a few marks. You know, a little... I mean, yeah, a little a little tiny ding there. A, little, a few scratches. It's going to happen. And one of the main reasons why this did get scratched up is because it's also a portable CD player. As you can see, it looks like one. You can't really judge it size-wise. I'm going to get a Mega Drive cart, though, and you can see the size compared to that to get a like estimate of the size of it. But uh, yeah, it's a portable CD player. As you can see, it's got open to put your CDs in. You've got stop, pause, play, skip forward, skip back, reset, which is for the um, Mega CD, Mega Drive. Uh, the power button is here on the front. Two controller ports there. But yeah, you've got, it's gonna be hard to do. I've only got this tiny light box, which I've borrowed for the time. You've got this flap here. I'm not gonna open it up because I ain't gonna be able to do it in one hand. Um, it's, it's perfect inside there, uh, nice and clean, no corrosion. That's another problem you can get with these. Um, so yeah, you put your batteries in there, two AA I think, and then you plug your headphones in there because that's the line out and that's the volume for it. And you've got a portable CD player so you can take it with you. So if you had that in your bag, it's obviously going to get a bit scratched and things like that if you're using it like that. And it, and back in, I'd say, when <laughs> when this come out, yeah, back when this come out, this would have been um, around... Would you say that, would we say 90s? Let's have a look. Uh, model, does it say anything on it? Pattern? No, I can't see anything there. It would have probably been 96, something like that. I'm guessing, I don't know exact date when this is out. Um, but yeah, you would have probably had this as a Walkman. Like, it wouldn't have been a problem because they were pretty big back then as they were. And they were terrible as well. I don't know what this is like. I haven't really tested it walking around with it. But the jog proof, you know, if you shook it all in your bag, it would skip galore. Like my partner was saying that hers used to do that all the time when she used to do like a paper round and things like that. So anyway, um, these systems are quite sought after. As you can see, it's got uh, the flap at the back, which is for your Mega Drive games. I've seen people cut these corners out to play Japanese games. Now, I wouldn't recommend that. I'd recommend getting like a Honeybee converter that you plug in and then put it in top because it's going to ruin it you know you, you don't really want to be chopping up chopping up an old retro system that's worth quite a bit of money anyway on the side we've got a screw uh, we have a AV out which uses the Mega Drive 2 port so it takes RGB out as well I think it came with a RF cable a standard which isn't great you've got a power adapter um, socket which is all in one with the other Mega CD you needed all these cables you needed a power supply for the Mega Drive you needed a power supply for the Mega CD this is all on one port which is great but that does come with its downsides uh, everything compressed together as is did cause some issues with the system now you've got um, I'll leave some pictures next anyway I'll try and cut them in but you have um, noise and interference in the picture I made a little video as well, but yeah, when you play it on a TV, I suppose like an old school CRT, you wouldn't notice it as much. You get jail bars in a lot of Sega stuff, which are lines down the screen in certain colors. You had some of those, and also, yeah, the noise was all over the image. So when you're using something like an OSSC, the open source scan converter, uh, not upscaling, but line doubling, it shows everything, everything up crystal clear. So you saw a lot of noise, and it for me, it made this unbearable to play. So this is a special one. It's been sent away to Simon Locke, 
Um, he's a genius with technology, literally a wizard. And what he's done is he's taken this system, he's added an RGB bypass, which passes, um, bypasses the onboard RGB circuit um, and turns it into a crystal clear, like, modern amp, I think they're called. It's like an amp. And I'm not technically minded with stuff like this to give you the clearest picture you can get. And it is seriously good. And I will show you some of that as well. Uh, he has added, what else did he add? A 60 hertz mod. So this screen here as standard is orange when powered on. If you hold the reset button, it can go blue. And when it's blue, it means it's USA. You hold the reset again, it goes green. It's in Japanese mode. So it will play any region cart, wherever you throw it. At. Mega CD. Now, of course, you can see it takes Mega CD games. Now, POW is standard and orange, <clears throat> but with the help, you can get a um, region-free BIOS for the multi-mega, which allows it to play any region. Thing is, this does the same thing. Um, look at that greasy prints on it already, look. Yeah, this does the same thing. The Mega EverDrive, you can put the BIOS files on the cartridge, plug it in, and when you turn it on, it will load up the EverDrive menu. Just click the BIOS you want. So if you want to play USS, USA games, set the LED to blue. Go on to the BIOS and select USA. Press A and it will boot up as if it was an American system and play the games exactly the same. Same for Japanese, same for PAL. Really, really cool. Um, I think he, yeah, he recapped it. Now I've seen um, a few people have got these systems. Now I got this ages ago and he's had it for a while to fix. Well, not fix, but upgrade. Um, I saw the Gebs got one, and she had a post on, uh, I think it was eBay, saying um, this has been upgraded where needed. The caps have been replaced where needed. Now, personally, I'd rather see images of the cap work replaced and actually have them all replaced. Obviously, if you're going in and there's like 30 caps and he's only needed to replace two because they're leaking, the others are going to fail eventually. So while you're in there, do the lot. So if you get in one of these systems, get it recapped, get every single cap replaced just because it's peace of mind and they do start leaking. The onboard battery as well, um, they can start leaking sometimes and also they're very old, sometimes they're not even saving still. So get that replaced while you can. Um, he got the laser assembly inside here. He uh, lubed it up and, yeah, just refurbished it. Um, and it just runs a lot quieter. When it started, when I first got it, it was a bit, you know, made a bit of noise, you know, a little bit of noise. And uh, now that it's all greased up, perfect, crystal clear. Um, it's crystal clear. Silence. Pure silence. Um, what else did he use? Did he do anything else? I think that's it. I did, I did speak to him, and uh, he's talking about another mod in the future of a dual oscillator for the uh, crystal that makes it 60 hertz, so you can get it closer to the actual dial-in of 60 hertz instead of being an, a, like a guesstimate. Um, so when you do the 60 hertz, it's a lot more uh, stable. It's fine as it is, but yeah, it, it's something to have in the future. There's not much room. As you can see, this thing is tiny for a system, and there's not much room to play about with in here, so you've got to be careful where you put stuff. Anyway, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to plug it in. I'm going to show you how it looks running and show you a little bit of the uh, region switching and show you um, what else I think about it. Okay, so I'm over at the uh, console now. And as you can see, the screen is blue, which means I'm in 60 hertz. If you can just get close, it might focus. There you go. It says game. I'll tell you that the game's running. I'm running the EverDrive at the moment with a bit of dynamite heady. Um, this is in 60 hertz mode at the moment. So when you're on the TV... It's hard to fit it all in because it zooms in when recording. But yeah, this is 60 hertz mode. Um, it's best to play most of the games like that, but just because the image is just a better shape and it's a bit weird when you're running the OSSC and things like that, that they like cut off and add borders to the top and bottom on PAL. Yeah, it's better to be 60 hertz. Uh, the control's wired in, which I didn't mention. Um, the controller can control the region at the same time as well. Problem is, trying to do the combo... I'm going to try it. Let's move the old PlayStation out of the way. This is going to be awkward. So you hold B, start, and then press left, down, or right. Uh, I'm going to try. There you go. So I switched to PAL. You can see it works. I'm not going to keep doing it because that's impossible to do. But uh, yeah, so orange is the stock color of the system. So I thought, why not, of course, go with orange for the same thing. Now, if you want to switch with this, you hold it until it changes. Like that, release, and then away you go. So now that's on 60 hertz. So that's something else he added, which is a remote function. So if you're sitting on the couch and you've gone onto a game that you want to play in PAL region for any reason, or Japanese for any reason, you can press the buttons on the controller, switch 
over the region and the color on here will like indicate what it's gone to and of course then the game will run in that correct uh i keep saying region but yeah that's how it works uh, mega cd obviously you want it in the correct region as well for what you're playing i'm not too sure how it works um uh, maybe you can run i haven't tested it too much but if you put usa in a japanese game in i think you need to be in japanese region on the actual system for it to work properly but anyway that's it running the the picture quality is fantastic through the rgb bypass so it's definitely a mod to go for uh, the stock picture as i said was very bad the uh, audio on these systems, people keep going on about RGB, the, not the RGB, sorry, the Mega Amp, the Amp Bypass, which gives you the audio um, from a new chip, which gives you like an unfiltered, crystal clear sounding uh, audio, basically. Um, the thing is with it, there's not much room in here. You don't want to be adding too much. It's really, it really is tiny. Look, it's so small. When you compare it to a Super Nintendo, look at it. So you don't want to be adding too much in there. But maybe it's something for the future. If there's a little room, you can tuck it away, but I don't think so. But the sound, if you're wondering, is really good from these. It's really nice, nice and clear. It's not too muffled or anything, so don't worry about that. But the RGB bypass is a must. But if we go over to the TV, this is not going to do it justice because, of course, I can't even zoom out anymore. This uh, is for a camera filming the TV. This is a 4K TV uh, showing how crystal clear it is it's absolute ignore like the lines and stuff that's from interference with the tv as it's trying to record it it is so clear let me put scan lines on uh yoink absolutely gorgeous like the best picture you can get from a mega drive with the rgb bypass it is so damn clear and like the audio the audio is going to mean nothing through this either absolutely gorgeous it looks fantastic it sounds fantastic and is the best way to go with the multi mega now some people will be like blasphemy you shouldn't mod it it should stay as it is but if you can keep it and you want it to be the best you can play with go for it go for the mods surely i mean i'll link uh, simon's twitter in the description so if you do want to get a hold of him and you're interested in mods like these i mean he's got a long waiting list i think because he's, he's he's always always busy um he's always got stuff on the go so yeah, but I'm sure he'll be able to help you out in the future if you do want stuff like this. But yeah, things to recommend. Full recap, definitely. Battery replacement, definitely. And the RGB bypass, definitely. The region mod is down to preference. If you want to play NTSC games, then you should go for it. If not, leave it at stock and just play with the EverDrive as it is on PAL games. But yeah, with all those mods, it become the ultimate system. And for me, it's fantastic. If I had one as a kid, I would have loved it. Especially how small it was and sleek definitely an attractive system but anyway that's it for the multi mega and that's my pickup and i hope you enjoyed the video and it wasn't too boring and i didn't make too many mistakes in it thanks a lot sorry about the cold and i'll see you in the next one bye